Welcome to Part 22 of Scotland's Ain Kingly Hooses. In this, the Hinmay's Part, we hear how Scotland tint her free stone in kingship. House of the Stuart, Hodden Gone. Queen Anne, 1702 to 1714. Anne was born on the 6th of February, 1665, at St James's Palace, London, and was the second daughter of Prince James and Anne Hyde. From July 1681 until May 1682, Anne bade in Scotland with her father James. It was the in time that she set foot in Scotland and had any skill of the country and her folk. On the 28th of July 1683, she was married at the King's Chapel at St James's Palace in London on George Audenburg of Denmark. George had been born about the 2nd of April 1653 at Copenhagen and was the son of Friedrich III of Denmark, Norwa and Sophie Guelph. After Anne's father, James, fled to France in 1688, the Crown of Scotland was given to Anne's sister Mary and her man Willem. And yince Willem deed, in March 1702, Anne became Queen in turn. Though she had been to Scotland and was a Stuart, Anne declared in becoming Queen that her heart was Sutheran through and through. What she kent or cared for Scotland was no worth a preen, but her time on the throne would change Scotland for aye. Even after a hundred year of giant kingships, England and Scotland was two societies apart. The merchant class of Scotland was heir to eastwards at traditional partners in the Netherlands, France and Scandinavia. At Haim, kinship met at Muckle. The feud had mostly gained way to the court of law in the Lowlands, but the Erem clan or kin was wheel stelt in northeast and Helen Erts. Through the 1690s, Parliament stent at hearths and heeds for to pay the army and navy, meld with reports for the kirk, and then provision for parochs and skills. Their hearth and pull tax papers has given historians a good idea of who money folk was in the country. To the west and north there were about 300,000 speakers of Gaelic, while in the lave of the country, to the south and east, there were about 700,000 speakers of Scots. In the far north, in Shetland, though Scots was Kent, none was yet spoken. Altogether, historians do loses just over a million folk bade in Scotland by 1700. A body can help but feel for Queen Anne. She got booker at least 17 times, and 12 times she miscarried or had deed born bairns. Anne and George had a bairn at one hour cried Prince Willem, born on the 24th July 1689. He was the hope of the family, but on the 30th July 1700 he deed, aged 11. Queen Anne herself was in the wheel. In particular, she had to throw gout and often had to be carried about in a sedan chair, as she was when she was taken to be crowned at Westminster Abbey on the 23rd April 1702. And of course she couldn't get going about, the Queen grew brosy and fat. In 1702, England, along with Austrich and the United Netherlands, gave to wear again France and Spain. The wear that Scotland was sucked in did muckle scathe to Scots tread, but the Queen lippened on her Ingalls ministers and the Duke of Marlbury that was Captain General of her armies. Ingalls ministers was feared that the king be richter primogenitor, meaning the eldest son of the eldest line, would claim back the thrones of England and Scotland. This was James Stuart, born in 1688 and reared in France as a Catholic. In 1701 he was proclaimed the richter king by the Jacobites as James the Echt. Knew that Queen Anne's A. Bairn had deed, the Ingalls ministers set about breaking the law of primogenitor in 1702 by putting through an act making Anne's German Protestant cousin, Sophie, the apparent heir to Debor James Stuart. 
but they never fashed themselves to spear at Scotland. When the Scots Parliament gathered in 1703, many of the members was black affronted at England's cheek. The Kintra party, he'd it be James Duke of Hamilton, knew ward the court party, he'd it be the Queen's Heath Commissioner, James Douglas, Duke of Queensbury. Afore they would vote Silla for the weir again France, they asked at the Queen to saddle the mater of the airship to Scotland's croon. In August 1703, the Scots passed an Act of Security that stated, Nay body could hoard the croon of Scots that held the croon of England, unless maters out stonin atween the baith, Kintras was addressed. Anne's ministers in London took a flag at the thochty Scotland bringing James the Echt hour and making common cause with the French. It became their policy to yoke Scotland to England and ding her doon as a free stonin state contraire Ingalls policy. In 1705, the Ingalls passed their AIN Act threatening to ban Scots imports and stop Scots for inheriting lands in England unless they agreed to hod talks to yoke the twa Kinricks. James Duke of Hamilton, a slithery and sleek at geo, new played twa games in public up in Scotland, but in Headlands, working with England in the interest of his lands and gear there a war. He made sure Queen Anne got to a pint the Scots that would negotiate with England, a pint it on the say of her Ingalls ministers. Between April and July 1706, a treaty was hammered out in London, the Hindmaid's terms agreed on the 22nd July. The Scots Parliament gathered and debated the treaty between October 1706 and January 1707, and yince the terms was kent, it steered a stushy in all the earths. Mobs set about Unionist houses in Embra, there were riots in a handful of tunes, and Ilka petition sent in and end the treaty was again it. Ministers of the Kirk preached again a union on the grounds that it would bring back the bishops, but in the November to get the ministers to hod their wished, an act was put through that the Kirk of Scotland would bide the established Kirk after the Union. For Shudderin, per of England's national debt, Scotland was to be paid £398,085 and 10 shillings. The Ingalls cried this the equivalent, and it was partly to be used to pay Scots merchants and investors that had tint cellar through Darien. In actual fact, the Scots would be charged mere tax on beer, wine and spirits after the Union to pay their cellar back to the Ingalls Chacker. Nobles and others that held office, that swithered about the treaty, had their loofs creased to mark their minds up. But a bin often, it was threats a weir that Gart members vote for the treaty. Mace didn't you lose Scotland could see half an Ingalls invasion, and thought it better get to get terms. Just to be sure, twa armies stood by to invade Scotland for Northumberland and Ulster. Affen Wrangley termed the Act of Union, a union that refers to Ireland in Echdeen Hunter, and no to Scotland of all. The Treaty of Union was ratified by the Scots Parliament on 16th of January and by the Englishian on the 6th of March 1707. Scunner all together, it is said that Andrew Fletcher of Saltoon declared that Scotland was fit new for nobody but the slaves that had sold it. When the 1st of May 1707, Scotland and England was joined under the name of the United Kinrick of Great Britain. Queen Anne was uncajocal at the passing of the treaty. Instead of about 1,230 members sitting in an Embra Parliament, Scotland now had 45 men among 550 echt in England's House of Commons, and 16 peers among 154 in England's House of Lords. In all but name, England's Parliament and politics would hod gone. In March 1708, King James the Echt, the Jacobite King, cried the All Pretender by the Unionists, attempted to land in Scotland for France, and a Queen Lairds in Stirlingshire, he'd it with James Stirling Akir, come out on his behalf. 
but ships at England's navy chased him. At the same time, an act was gone by the London Parliament for establishing a militia in Scotland, but Queen Anne was fricked at at the news of her half-brother, and vetoed the act on the grounds that the soldiers list it mich join the Jacobites. Though in the same year the Privy Council of Scotland was abolished through the fault of the Scots nobles fechting among themselves, and the treason law of England was broke in Scotland, both contrary the spirit of the Treaty of 1707. Scotland was meant to keep her own laws, while the treaty stated that nay court in England could change the sentence of a Scotsian, but the House of Lords now started tacking appeals for Scotland. In 1712, Westminster broke down Kirk patronage again, giving the recht to lairds and other heritors to present ministers. The Kirk of Scotland had sold its soul for nothing and would break apart over the heat of this matter in 1843. Hertz scored it at the failings of the treaty. All the Scots members in the House of Lords took the rue and put for a motion to end the Union in 1713, but was defeat we are horn for votes. Queen Anne took a shock on the 30th of July 1714 and tint her poor a speech. She did on the 1st of August at Kensington Palace, London, at the age of 49. Her man, Prince George, had died afore her on the 28th of October 1708 at the same palace. Scotland's kingship had ended in the body of Brody, Ingalls' wifey. The Kings Over the Water In 1714, the ministers of England in broke a German usurper cried George of Hanover to be their king and hawed James Stuart out. In Scotland, among the Jacobites, Hanover was dismissed as the wee German lairdy. John Erskine Earl Lamar had sook it up with the London regime, but found them called riff to his ambition. Instead, he gave over to James the Echt and started a rising in Scotland on his behalf in September 1715. Kent as Bob and John, Mar was nae leader, and though he met the Hanover army under John Campbell Duke of Argyll at the Fecht of the Sheremuir on 13th November 1715, neither side had the hour horn. James the Echt landed at Peterhead on the 22nd December, but took no wheel. He and the Marian swither and left Scotland for Montrose on the 4th of February 1716. In the summer of 1719, Spain agreed uphaud to another Jacobite etal on Scotland, but hit was defeat at the Fecht of Glen Shiel. Campbell Argyle and his brother Archibald Campbell of Isla, signed Duke Sell, ruled over Scotland on behalf of London, bringing Obdi that met her into their political guff through their hoard our offices, pensions and positions. It wasn't until the summer of 1745 that James the Echt sent over his son Cheryl Stuart, Kent as bony Prince Charlie, to try and tack the Crown Yint's mare. For money, the Stuarts over the water had aye been the recht for heirs. With a small army of Jacobite clans, Cheryl Stuart blutter the Hanover army under Sir John Cope at the Pans and took Embra in September 1745. He set up court at Hallyrood House and signed proclaimed his father James as king and the union with England end it. By December, Cheryl's had gained the length of Derby in England, but folk there war was Lou Warham and he decided to head back to Scotland. On 17th January 1746, Cheryl's gave the Hanovers on her General Holly and neither said the fate at the Falkirk. But now London had gathered its macht, both for England and for soldiers broke him for continental weirs. On 16th April 1746, the Jacobites was defeat with an army on a Willem Duke of Cumberland at Culloden Muir by an Arness. 
Cumberland slouched her Jacobite soldiers left her to own the field. And as men did they fash themselves our muckle about what houses to burn or folk to kill. For this reason he is Aben Kent as the butcher. As to Cheryl Stuart, he took to the heather and signed to France, where he deed in 1788. The hen maist of the Stuarts, his brother Henry, deed in 1807. At the hinner end, nane of the Stuarts over the water was worthy of the lealty that Simone in Scotland had gained them. For the second time in a hunna year, Scotland had to throw Ingle's usurpation. To be sure, the conquesters knew gaid under the name of British, and there were Scots anuch to work with them, as in Cromwell's time. But London ministers, the Ingles in the Parliament, and Sutheran opinion, called this a Scots rising, and toward all Scots as Jacobites. A new hatred of Scotland, her cultures and folk, that historians have cried Scotophobia, new grup of England. The Helens was peacified, and soldiers and forts steed it about the Kintra to deserum and daunt in the clans. Fort George, big at a lang for Inner Ness between 1748 and 1769, was the biggest of its kind. It never loused a shot in anger, because Scotland was now a conquest in this jasket land. <laughs>